It's time now to catch up with one of the all-time great softball players at the University of Tulsa, Julia Hollingsworth uh, from Ennis, Texas, who joins us now. And Julia, it's not that long ago that you finished your career, so it's kind of fresh in your mind. What are your thoughts about your four years as a softball player at TU? I just think of all the countless memories and experiences I got to have. Um, being able to represent the university at the level that I was was an incredible opportunity. And it's definitely going to be memories I cherish for the rest of my life. That's for sure. Most recently, Julia, as you know, they uh, had a vote on all of the great players. And there have been a bunch of them at the University of Tulsa. And you were named to the all-time team as an outfielder. How does that make you feel? What's it mean to you? Uh, it means the world. I mean, I've worked my whole life to, you know, reach that level of playing college ball. And um, honestly, I wasn't expecting this honor. I think it's an incredible honor. I was up against incredible athletes that have done so much for the program over the years. So just being able to be voted into something like this is incredible. And I'm extremely thankful. Julia, take us back to when you were recruited by Coach John Barfeld. Uh, because he saw some things in you, especially in your hitting style, that he was really intrigued by. So let's go back to, to Ennis, Texas, and maybe some of the summer ball that you played as well in the recruiting process uh, with the University of Tulsa. How did that go? Well, the first time I believe I was watched by Tulsa, I was in the showcase tournament. And at showcases, they're a little bit different. Like if a college coach is wanting to see someone play, you know, you can put them ahead in the lineup and rules are a little bit um, – eased up for showcases to showcase the talent. So Chrissy was there watching me and I had this probably nine pitch at bat, ended up walking. So I get on base and I get requested to go hit again. So <laughs> we put a runner in for me and I go back up to bat. And I probably went through about five at bats because I would, you know, end up getting a full count and work it to get in the walk. And Chrissy went and watched me hit. So by the time I had my last at bat, I ended up, I think I got a gap shot to left center and uh, <laughs> I get on base and the time for the game had ran out. So that was Chrissy's first time getting to see me play. Um, and then I, you know, Coach Jay came and watched me play. Uh, 2K, who was our coach my freshman year, came and watched me play. I came on a visit and I fell in love with the school and I knew that that's where I needed to be. And once you got to Tulsa, you just started hitting. I mean, you didn't, you didn't never <laughs> yes, stopped sir. until you were done. Um, I, I wasn't a hitter for most of my high school days. Um, I was a slapper, and I occasionally hit. And then once I got to uh, college, Coach Jim was like, you know, we really just want you to hit. And one thing led to another, and I was hitting and hardly ever slapping. And we still make jokes about it to this day. Oh, well, like if I were doing bad, we'd be like, oh, slapper juice coming out. And because <laughs> I was always trying to find some way to get on base. So, yeah, I just turned over to being a hitter. Yeah, I was going to say, you use that sometimes to get out of a slump, uh, the, the run up and the slap hitting. However, uh, somebody, obviously uh, Coach, Coach Chrissy and Coach Jay, saw something in the way you hit uh, when you actually stayed in the box and, and, and hit, I don't know, say naturally, but hit traditionally, if you will. Mm -hmm. So there was something there that they saw. And I'm not sure if you saw that. Uh, I, I've always known that I've kind of had a little bit of an unorthodox swing. Um, if you look at the technicality of things, my swing might be a little off, but it was just one of those things that worked for me and um, it got me to where I was. So I wasn't going to complain, that's for sure. One of the things you always did well and it made you a great hitter, Julia, was you used the entire field. Uh, you didn't mind taking a ball the other way. Not at all. I actually think I, if you looked at my spray charts over the years, I hit more to the left side of the field than to my pool side on the right side. Um, I loved, you know, staying inside the ball and trying to push it away from the right side of the field as much as possible. So. Your career average was 378. Uh, you're in the top five, top 10 in, in almost all of the important categories in hitting. <laughs> what, are you, what are you most proud of, uh, of all of those numbers? Honestly, I wasn't even aware of my standing point in any of those uh, records, I guess you could say. Um, it was more so of what I could do to get us to that next game, get us to that um, next push. You know, the, the goal was always to get past a regional. 
and that was something that I, was always on my mind. So when it comes to numbers, I, you know, I looked for the inconsistencies. I was definitely one that after a weekend I would go and I'd watch to see what I did wrong and watch to see what pitches I wasn't executing well and stuff like that. But as far as um, like the triples, I think that's one of the records I have. I was never, I didn't know that I broke that until I think after the game had happened. That's just, it wasn't ever something that I was like, oh, well, you know, two more hits and I'll have this record or something like that. You know, it was always just trying to figure out how to put the team in the best position. Julia, you're not only number one in triples, but also an on-base percentage. You were always oh. a pretty patient hitter and you didn't mind taking a walk when it helped the team. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, softball is at this stage right now where pitchers are better, uh, defenses are better. So if I can get on base with a walk, that's for sure going to be something that I'm going to take advantage of because we've always had a strong lineup coming up behind me. So I've always just kind of taken the free base and see what I can do with it. And you most of the time were a leadoff hitter, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, and coach sir. I was, liked I was to a put three hole for a little bit, but then most of my years I was leadoff. Yes, sir. And I remember coach talking about that in that I wanted to get my best hitter as many at bats as possible. And he, he did all the numbers on that, didn't he? Saying, hey, if, if you're the leadoff, you'll bat 47 more times if you're the leadoff yeah. as opposed to two or three. So he had, he had an idea about why he wanted to do that. And it turned out pretty good, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely did get a lot of at bats. Um, but at the same time, I think part of the leadoff's job is to see what pitches are getting thrown at what sequence and um, being able to bring back as much information to the rest of the lineup as possible. So Julia, was, you were, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's no big deal. Um, I was just trying to see, you know, what I could give to Morgan. If Morgan was in the two hole or if Maggie was in the two hole, um, trying to give them as much information from an at bat as possible. Now you were part of uh, obviously, you know, four teams that went to the NCAAs. Uh, went to the regionals. That whole experience obviously was different every year, but what do you recall about all of your experiences in the in the tournament and, and in the regionals? Just the energy, you know, um, like I said earlier, getting to play college ball has always been a dream of mine. And once I got to college, I moved on to my next dream, which was winning a regional or going to postseason. So I just have to say the energy of postseason ball is just incredible um you know the competition's high there there is a little bit of pressure but at the same time it's where you get to be carefree and just you know play the game that you grew up loving so it was always it, the energy was definitely unmatched that's for sure and in the first three years of your career uh the team went down to norman and trying to get through that regional is always difficult almost knocked the door down in 2017. What do you recall about that particular regional when Tulsa uh, finally was kind of in the driver's seat and in the winner's bracket, if you will, and, and, and kind of had, had the whole thing by your throat? Yeah, um, I just, you know, playing OU is always a good game, no matter what year it's going to be. Uh, OU has incredible athletes, but at the same time, I think Tulsa has incredible athletes. So, Anytime we were able to play each other, you know, I think our competition levels rise. Um, so being able to go play in that regional and be in the driver's seat um, was definitely a change for things because we're all we're definitely a type of team that, you know, backs against the wall. We just like to be scrappy and find a way to get the W. So, um, you know, playing in Norman with all those OU fans, but then you get to see all these Tulsa fans, too, which is so cool to, uh, you know, being up to bat and hearing people not just cheer for OU um, was definitely a really cool experience. And as you think about some of the players that you played with during those years and during those regionals and that sort of thing, and you look at this all-time team, you see several of those members of, of those squads you played on also on this all-time team. It's, it, you played with a special group of young ladies. Yeah, they were all incredible athletes. And, you know, I think playing with them was what pushed me to be even better than what I came into college as. You always think, you know, once you get to college, there's all this room for improvement and there's nothing truer than that statement. I was definitely not the ball player that I was my senior year of college versus my senior year of high school. That's for sure. 
and as a senior, you ran into some injury problems. Uh, uh, you, you had a knee injury that really hampered you, but you kind of you kind of fought through it. Describe how frustrating that was, and, and maybe how proud you were to still be able to gut, gut it out. So it happened the OSU game when we were playing in Stillwater. I uh, broke off a piece of cartilage in my knee hitting first base, and when it initially happened, I just had a feel of panic, you know. And I don't think it was the basic panic that you would think of, oh, no, like, did I just seriously injure myself? It was, oh, no, like, am I going to be able to run bases? Am I going to be able to finish the game? So that was the first thing that went through my mind. And then once we figured out what the problem was, um, I was with, I was in the training room every day, uh, working with the staff in there and just making it to where I could still perform at the highest level possible. Um, it was a lot, a lot of tests, I guess you can say. I, I had some moments where it was really, really frustrating, but at the same time, you know, being around the team um, and just, you know, keeping my main focus on getting us to that next level, you know, winning games, getting a championship, going to a regional, um, getting past a regional. Those were the main things that kept me, you know, on target on what I wanted to do. So that kind of helped distract me from all the pain I was having to go through. And Julia, what people may forget is that you were such a good base runner, lots of stolen bases. Uh, you ran the bases well, but that hampered you in, in regard to running the bases. And, and then obviously the biggest concern was how would it affect your hitting? But somehow you got through it and you were able to continue to play and at least be effective. Yeah, once we, once we figured out what brace would be most effective for me, it kind of took a lot of the pain off of my knee. So um, figuring out what brace would best be used and figuring out, you know, how, how do I slide now? Because it's my same knee that crosses under whenever I slide. So just kind of adjusting to those little types of things. Um, and once we figured out, you know, what's going to hurt me and what's not going to hurt me and how to avoid being in pain if I don't have to be in pain. Uh, and we figured out a system that worked. And I mean, there, there were bad days. I'm not saying that it was all sunshines and rainbows. But uh, once we figured out what was going to be the best way to approach it, um, I think all staff, as far as coaching, um, athletic training staff, and the team in general, we all just kind of figured out, you know, what was the best way to go at it. And it worked for the most part. <laughs> Yeah, and Julie, in that senior year, you didn't have to bang your head against the Norman Wall. You end up going to Stillwater against OSU, and again, you had some opportunities, and probably that that uh, second game against uh, OSU, which was a very unusual college softball game in that it was just a high-flying, high-scoring affair, unfortunately mm -hmm. came out on the wrong end of the stick. But what a great game that was and a great opportunity for, for the program. Oh, yeah, I just think that that's a testimony to how – you know, we do things at Tulsa, you know, um, never count us out. We're always going to be fighting to the very end until we get told that we have to go off the field. <laughs> We're going to be giving it all and seeing what we can do to get ahead. That's just the way things are. We approach practices that way, always having that grit and um, just giving it all at all times. When you got to the regional final against Oklahoma State, you know, after uh, uh, winning in the uh, if game, if you will, against BYU, uh, unfortunately, they win the game. And when that final out occurred, you realize your career was over. What's that like? What's the feeling like? It was a very strange experience because at the same time, I knew my career was ending. And then I was like, oh, well, this next talk I have with Coach Jay is going to be the last talk I get to have as a player or this might be some of the last time I see some of these girls in a while or because I mean you spend so much time with each other whether it be practices or traveling or I, I mean my roommate was a softball player so I was with Sarah at home and then we'd go to the field and we I mean we were just constantly around each other so I think that was the biggest um, feeling that I was feeling about those, those emotions you know um, like all of these are all potentially lasts for me and then before I even I, I don't even think I got to be in the picture uh that the team took after the game because coach Jay Shanice and I had to go do a post-game interview so I was looking back through all these pictures and I was like oh like 
I, I had time to kind of process my emotions, but at the same time, it was like, all right, I got to go talk about, you know, what I could have done better and what I could have done to change the outcome of that game. So it was, it kind of helped me in a way. I wasn't able to process all of the emotions at that same time. Um, it was just realizing that, you know, this chapter of my life's over and it's time to start the next chapter. And now as we continue to catch up with you, Julia, after your career was over, you still had a fifth year at TU. So you stayed around the program and you were a student manager this past year under coach Chrissy Strimple. What was that like? Oh, it was an awesome experience. Uh, softball's always been a big passion of mine. So being able to stick around the program as I was finishing up my degree was an incredible opportunity. I was, I was surprised Chrissy allowed me because Chrissy was probably thinking, oh, I'm finally getting rid of Julia. I don't have to see her, hear her awful dad jokes all the time. But honestly, just being able to be around them and see what all is put into um, a season and going from that player mindset to, you know, being on a staff is definitely an experience that I think is so valuable to me. Um, I was really just a sponge. I liked having these conversations to see, you know, what part of a swing was working and what part of a swing wasn't, or when we're throwing certain pitches, why throw it in that sequence? So there's just a, it's just such a big world to see what is put into playing behind the scenes. So it was, it was awesome. I loved every minute of it. And now you have your degree from TU in exercise sports science. So what's next for you? Uh, I am applying to grad schools and hoping to GA and stay around the softball program for as long as I can. Um, and I would like to see where that takes me. You know, I'm super excited. I've always wanted to go get my master's degree. So if I'm able to coach during that, that'd be awesome. So that's what so I'm looking maybe- at right now. So maybe someday a coach, huh? Yes, sir. That's definitely been in my mind. Julia, thank you so much for taking the time. You always obviously were a class act during during your career, really did a terrific job. One of the all-time great players. Thank you so much for taking the time catching up. Dude, thank you so much. It was so awesome to get to speak to you again. I, ha- I never got to have an actual final conversation with you, so it was good to catch up, that's for sure.